Hello, everyone. I'm currently working on several more intensive projects for the channel, but this felt too important not to discuss. Over spring break, there was a domestic terrorist attack in Christchurch, New Zealand. A mosque full of Muslim civilians was shot up by... Well, I've discussed the shooter and his ideals on Twitter extensively, and the consequences his actions have. Needless to say, the man was a meme-screeching, aggressive, white supremacist. The shooter wanted us to get caught up in his affiliations, so the damage of this event would stay somewhat buried. His name is plastered everywhere, even as the Prime Minister of New Zealand asks us to make him a nameless phantom. But I'm already critical of the people the shooter claims to praise. I'm already critical of white supremacy, of racism, and oppressive violence. Nothing about this incident changes anything for me. But what has changed would be the lives of the Christchurch shooting survivors and the lives of the families of those who died. So I've decided my focus should be on the victims. Wasim Daragme a Muslim barber who immigrated from Jordan five years ago for a better life in New Zealand. He and one of his daughters were shot multiple times in the terror attack. Last I heard, they were in critical condition. Dude Nabi, in the live stream of the shooting, this was the man who greeted the shooter with a loving, Hello, brother, believing him to be a friend and welcoming him into their place of worship. He jumped in front of another worshipper to protect them from a bullet and died. Naim Rashid. After he witnessed his son Talha shot and killed, and men and women slain all around him, he lunged at the terrorist with his bare hands. He died fighting to keep the bastard from hurting anyone else. That is the mark of a truly brave man to me. Muka Ibrahim was only three years old. This beautiful little boy is the youngest of the victims. He had his whole life ahead of him. Remember him like this, smiling wide with his loving brother Abdi. Khaled Mustafa, he fled from ISIS and war-torn Syria with his family to pursue a new life in New Zealand. He was shot dead while praying. He secured a better life for his family, but won't be there to realize that dream with them. Ara Parvin, 42. She and her husband Farid left Bangladesh and settled in New Zealand in 1994. Years ago, Farid grew ill and had to use a wheelchair. When the terrorist aimed at Farid, Ara jumped in front of the bullets. He lived, but she did not. These are just a few of the lives taken or damaged by this vile act of hatred. Fifty-one people have died either in the attack or in the days since then, forty-nine or more injured or in critical condition. Men, women, children. There is nothing I hate more than someone who kills, not in self-defense, but out of seething hatred or perverse greed. These people did not deserve death. They did not deserve to suffer. In the description, I have linked to multiple charities that you can give to to help the survivors of this massacre and the families of those who have died. I myself have given what little I can. We can talk and debate about the shooter and his ideology all we fucking want. And I will continue to be critical of the shooter's ideals and ideology with every breath in my chest. But to me, that is not nearly as important as helping the community of Christchurch recover from this shooting. My last message to all of you is this. Do not believe the awful things you are told about Muslims. Much like Christianity, Islam is often twisted by terribly cruel people as an excuse to be terribly cruel and oppressive to others. But many Muslim people are incredibly kind, loving human beings who seek only 
to share their love with others. I hope that everything I've said here will be taken to heart. Stay safe. Stay smart. Stay informed. I love you all.